day going on in here as always I'm sure how is everyone's day who do we got in here oh boober you still watch that makes me happy I was wondering where you've been hey buff I'm doing good man trying to keep up with life throwing me all this stuff right now today's stream is for you man pretty excited to make all this welsh food so woohoo make sure you give me any pointers if you feel like i'm making it wrong uh not sure if you saw the recipes i posted in discord but that's what i'm going to be using how are you doing though buff how is your injury healing up and stuff 
hope it's good. Okay, so menu today, Welsh Rare Bit, aka Cheesy Toast, that is fancy, <laughs> and Call, which is a very simple broth-based soup from Wales that typically has lamb, but since my family doesn't love lamb as much as I do, I'm going to use beef instead. So I'll make up a really nice beef broth as well. I have a bunch of trim that we can roast up make a beef broth and then we'll use that to make our soup as well and then for the beef i just have stewing pieces of beef i'm not going to use this whole package probably we'll only use like three quarters of it but this is the beef that we picked up and it's 20 bucks for this pack so it's pretty cheap and then i saw some recipes also had bacon in it so we'll use some bacon as well it's gonna be tasty Simple food is always really tasty. I have leeks, I have leeks. Yes, this is an also another important ingredient is you need leeks for this. And then don't hate me buff, but I'm gonna put a couple other veggies in that I have laying around. So I had some little zucchini still, I'm doing carrots, potatoes. There's a little bit of peas that actually started sprouting in the fridge so I was like well I should use those up and then I just had a little bit of mushrooms left too so I thought that would be wonderful Vader's hosting the stream thanks guys woohoo leeks are the most important thing in any Welsh food yeah my job I don't know how I'm gonna juggle all this but I'll work it out <laughs> hi Omat how are you and me's coming in from Vader's. How was the stream? I'm not sure what you guys streamed today at all, but hopefully it went well. Still love that pizza emote so much. <laughs> Hope all is well in the UK for you guys. How's the weather been? Okay, and then for dessert, this is not a Welsh dessert but you guys know that I had the pineapples sitting out for like a week. So yesterday we made our pineapple preserve and then we're gonna make a pineapple delight. That is a very classic dessert, but I'm gonna make it into a tart instead. So make it a little bit more fancy, but I know typically this dessert is made with like canned crushed pineapples and Cool Whip, but I'm gonna make up a mixture. So we have our pineapples, I'm keeping that separate. And then we'll whip up some cream cheese with whipped cream and make like a nice vanilla cream to go on top and then garnish it with coconut bacon. You guys are probably like, what? What is that? You made a shrimp boil, yum. I've wanted to do like a crawfish boil for so long, but that's never gonna happen here. I have to go down south for that. Yay, Omat. I'm so happy. It's been forever since we've been together. I'm doing good, man. Life is just busy, busy, busy right now. Can't believe how fast the summer is going by. Welsh rarebit. I know. Cheesy toast. How can you go wrong? Fancy ass tart. Okay, so you guys know that I got my new job at the restaurant. And last night I get a text from our farm manager, Robin, saying that her second in command decided to leave for the rest of the summer. So she offered me the full-time job at the farm as well. But sadly I declined it. I know it was, it's insane, but I said no because it's just not good timing right now. And I also don't feel like driving that far every day either. And I wouldn't be able to stream with you guys. And she already knew that, but she thought she would ask anyways, cause you never know. It's busy there too, Omat. <laughs> Hi, Mama. Thanks, Vaders. It's been super hot. Yeah, it's been hot here too. Not too humid though or muggy, so that's nice. I got offered, well, I didn't get offered. I had an interview on Thursday, went in for my test shift on Saturday for like five hours. It was the longest stage shift I've ever had. Typically they're like three, but I stuck it out and then 
they hired me yesterday three days a week but I'm working weekends now and I know that's going to affect me a little bit you're glad I said no I don't think the farm pays very well as that too so I was talking to one of the girls today I'm not sure what they get paid I've never asked but there's that I mean that's life right it's like you get dealt one thing that you think you want and then another thing pops up and it's like oh god juggling too many balls now they're just everywhere <laughs> Yeah, Omat, I'm not going to be streaming on Wednesdays now. Because I work Wednesdays at the restaurant right now from like 11 to 5. But later in the summer, it will be a full shift, like 11 to 7. And I'm not sure for the rest of the schedule. We'll see how I can kind of deal with all this first. And I really don't want to get another stream out of the schedule. Like, I still want to have that four days. I feel like it would just be weird if I didn't stream <laughs> with you guys. Yeah, it's going to be a break day. Thanks for the host as well, Rush. It's all good, Buff. You know the dealio. You're keeping up to date. I love that. Okay, so as well as our pineapple tart, since I'm not streaming tomorrow, which sucks, because I know Elvin wanted to cook with me, I think we should make some pickles today too if we have time. I have a bunch of radishes and garlic scapes sitting around here. I really want to process them before they actually start to go bad. I know, I know, I'm really worried that I might burn out. I mean, I know that feeling from the past. But I think the way, like, my job at the restaurant, I'm not, like, super committed to it, right? Because I'm just part-time. I'm basically just their helper in their kitchen. Whatever they need me to do, I'm going to do it. So I'm okay with that. It's not like I'm the pastry chef and the sous chef and all of that at once. I think I'll still be able to focus on the stream. And plus I'll learn a lot and be able to teach you guys more stuff too. I think it will work. Just got to keep myself healthy and happy. You're cooking a curry. Yum. Okay, let's get into it. So timeline today, I've never made any of these dishes, or at least the not, not the Welsh ones. I made a Welsh rarebit in culinary school, but that's like seven years ago. And it definitely wasn't as fancy as Jamie Oliver's recipe. So his recipe says it cooks in 15 minutes. So there's that, super, super simple. And then the call, because we have bigger pieces of beef, I would say you probably have to simmer this at least an hour. So we'll probably get that going sooner than later. And then the pineapple tart, the crust is pretty easy to make. It's just butter and graham crumbs. And then I believe you par bake it. Yeah, bake for 10 minutes. And then all we have to do is whip up our cream topping. So that's also pretty simple. Just a lot of stuff to do, I guess. <laughs> have you ever cooked up dope in a crock pot? I have not. I have not. I have not. I have not gone to Migos level yet. Okay, let's do some fun facts and then we'll get started. Okay, so Welsh rarebit or Welsh rabbit, which is the original spelling. It's a dish made with a savory sauce of melted cheese and various other ingredients and served hot. And then it gets poured over slices of toasted bread. Or it says the cheese sauce may be served in a chafing dish like a fondue. And it can be accompanied by the sliced toasted bread. So, Buff, have you ever had this fondue style? I feel like that's just kind of getting away from what it should be kind of silly. I should do it next stream. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think that'd be kind of a waste. So the name of the dish originates from 18th century Britain. And despite the name, the dish contains no rabbit meat. Oh, Matt, what did you do this weekend? enjoy the weather at least. So 
So recipes for Welsh rarebit include the addition of ale, so some kind of beer if you want, mustard, ground cayenne pepper or paprika, and Worcestershire sauce. So it's like a spiced kind of cheese sauce. The sauce may also be made by blending cheese and mustard into a bechamel, which that sauce base for bechamel is flour and butter cooked with milk until it's thick. So that would be a much more rich version, I think. More like runny even as well. Hi, Lemon. How are you? Visited your father and his girlfriend. Oh yeah, Father's Day. Well, that's nice. Then you went on a family visit trip to your grandparents and the parents of your dad's girlfriend. Fun. Family activities. So acknowledging that there is more than one way to make a rare bit, some cookbooks have included two recipes. The one that's the bechamel based and then the other one with beer. Or it can also not have beer. So totally up to you. I don't think there's beer in this one today. No. But it does have eggs and creme fraiche. So a little bit different. And I thought that would be really, really nice. I am well, Lemon. Thank you. Happy you're here. Came home at 10 p.m. on Sunday. <laughs> Man, that's a busy weekend. Milk or beer, you can use most liquids. I like how versatile it is, Buff. Okay, so Origin. The first recorded reference to the dish was in 1725. But the origin of the term is unknown. There is some suggestion that Welsh rabbit derives from a South Wales Valley staple in which a generous lump of cheese is placed into a mixture of beaten eggs and milk, then seasoned with salt and pepper and baked in the oven until the egg mixture has firmed and the cheese has melted. That would be a very weird texture to have the cooked eggs but melted cheese. I don't know about that. Then it says onion may be added and the mixture would be eaten with bread and butter and occasionally with the vinegar from pickled beetroot. Do you like dip it in the vinegar? Craziness. Yeah, I'm going international, man. <laughs> hey, Steve, how are you? I'm happy you're here, man. I wanted to follow up with you and see if you actually wanted me to cook you food while you're here. I'm not trying to pressure you, but you need to let me know so that I can start to plan out your stuff and kind of cost it out for you. Because 350 bucks a week, like you can eat like a king. So let me know, man. Because I'm totally down to make you food for a week and come and deliver it while you're working here. You wouldn't mind trying some rabbit. I bet it's super tender. Rabbit is really, really nice. I quite adore eating rabbit. But I've only had it one or two times. Okay, so that's it for Welsh rarebit. First recorded reference, 1725. It's pretty old. 350 bucks a week, a week for, for like what? Let's say three meals a day. So 50 bucks a day for three meals. You can still eat very well for that if you eat home cooked food. But 50 bucks for a day if you're gonna eat out, that will go like that. Okay, so call. This is also a Welsh dish. And the word is used to refer to any soup or broth. Historically, the ingredients tended to vary, but the most common recipes are with lamb or beef, with leeks, potatoes, swedes, which is turnip. Dang, I should have grabbed some of the Japanese turnips from the farm today. And carrots or other seasonal vegetables and call is recognized as a national dish of Wales. 
So the other vegetables that I'm adding today is zucchini, peas, and mushrooms, as well as the potatoes and the carrots. You stepped into the middle of this movie, it's true. You spend 30 a week? Holy shit, dude, how do you survive? <laughs> That's nuts though. Okay, so with recipes dating back to the 14th century, Paul is widely considered to be the national dish of Wales. Yes, I just said that. Thank you. Traditionally eaten during the winter months in the southwest of Wales. Today, the word is often used to, ref to refer to a dish containing lamb and leeks due to their association with the Welsh culture. But historically, it was made with either salted bacon or beef. So that's what we're doing today. We're doing the bacon and beef, along with the turnips, carrots, and other veg. So with the introduction of the potato into the European diet in the latter half of the 16th century, it too would become a core ingredient in the recipe. Student budget, it, that is fair, man. Like, you have to do what you gotta do. There is no judgment here. Believe me, I have been there. Sammy and I have been to that point. And it's not the most fun, but that's life. Like, not every day is perfect. Sleep called, it misses me. Honestly, my sleep should not be affected too much. But I'll know that I'm overworking myself when I start to not be able to sleep. So as soon as I can't sleep, that means my body's like going into overdrive and I will go slowly and back into a hole, which let's not make that happen. <laughs> Ketchup on saltine crackers and a piece of American cheese. Oh my God. Okay, back to our call. The meat in the dish was normally cut into medium sized pieces and simmered with the vegetables in water. The stock was thickened with either oatmeal or flour, interesting, and was then served without the meat or vegetables as a first course. Okay. So like a thickened broth. And then the vegetables and slices of meat would then be served as a second course. I like this. Call served as a single course is today the most popular way to serve the meal. So as a soup entirely. So there is a Welsh phrase, I don't know how to say it, buff, gnud callo, which means to make a call of something, which also means to mess something up. So call pretty, pretty much means you're making a mess in a pot. I like it. So the word call in Welsh is the first recorded in the 14th century. So way, way back. And it's thought to come from the Latin word collies meaning the stalk of a plant, a cabbage stalk, or even a cabbage. Cabbage would also be really, really good in this. So basically a meat stew with vegetables. Easy peasy. Hey Rush, how's it going, man? Oh Matt, you made sweet potato mushroom soup for dinner, tuna pasta pesto salad for lunch, and a banana and quark. There is nothing wrong with that. That is so good. Real salami and cheese and crackers for some artisan Lunchables. Yes. You guys have Lunchables too? Yeah, a little bit of rare bit, a little bit of cheesy toast to go with our soup today, which is why I decided to load the soup with vegetables. Kind of even things out. Oh, it's okay, Steve. You ended up not taking the job for personal reasons. Like we all have our stuff, right? Like I turned down a job today too. It happens. I know it sucks, but we all have our lives that we have to live, man. Don't be too bummed out. That costed you about eight bucks, cooked dinner for two. So it's about five spent on the food for you today. That is so, so good, Omat. You're a really good budgeter for cooking. I've been good, Rush. Thanks for asking. Hope all is well with you and the fam. 
Okay, let's get started. I have not written out anything else for today. Once again, I'm going to try and do these streams where I don't read off my paper or my little lesson plan for the day. I'm just trying to like free cook and see how I can do. Because not writing that out, that will save me a lot of time during the day where I can do other stuff. You buy sale items and are aware of the cost of items. That's all it re you really need. And if you feel like you don't know, start to make yourself like a little price list. And you will notice that a lot of stuff does vary in price week to week. Like some stuff goes up, some stuff goes down. And yeah, everything goes on sale. So to buy something full price, it just seems silly. So those are some tips for people that feel like they need to budget with their food. Okay, honestly, I think the first thing we're going to do is to start to make our beef broth for the call. So I have a bunch of beef trim just in the sink that I pulled from the freezer. There's like five bags. So let's put that onto a sheet pan and we'll roast it up. Then I think while that's going, we'll make our tart crust to bake after. Yay for dishwashers in the middle of the kitchen. I just want <laughs> some parchment paper. Oh God. The struggle guys, the struggle's real right now. Just give me a sec. There's only 22 minutes left on this thing. Give the application of the supermarket on your phone. What? You look at it every Sunday to see what's for sale for the week. That's all you gotta do. So good. That one hit you hard. Dang, Steve. Well, I hope something else comes your way. I'm sure it will. Like, that's how life works. When one thing leaves, that, that gives you room for something better. That's how I, I like to look at it, at least. All of the beef bags. You hoard the stuff that doesn't expire. So do we. Sammy and I have like built up such a good little pantry in our cold room already. It's like a mini grocery store almost. Okay, so this is what we're looking at right now. Let's start to take this stuff out of the bag. When canned tuna is for sale, you get like 20 cans. It makes sense. Yeah, you will, Steve. You will keep pushing on. That's what life's all about. The freezer is your friend for me. I like to like keep a lot of stuff in there, usually. Veggies is what kills us, yeah. Going to get fresh greens every other day sucks. I believe that. Do you not have like a little garden lemon? Where did I get the rare bit from? Local butchers? Rush, are you pulling my leg? Rare bit is not actually rabbit. It's the cheesy toast from Wales. Yeah, I hunted it down. Honestly, it's funny you say that because I did see the cutest little rabbit on my drive home from the farm today. Just sitting in a field. Okay, this is a big piece. But this is all the trim that we have saved up from like grinding meat lately. So finally, 
I built it up enough that we can use it to make a really, really nice beef broth. And this part, honestly, I think I might just keep this out because we're going to be making some bolognese on Friday. And these pieces of meat actually look nice or I'll just cut them up to put them into the call today. I'll just put them in a bowl for now, I guess. But they just look too nice to just use for broth. Like that's a nice piece of meat that someone could definitely eat. Okay, you don't have space to grow the greens. Well, that's fair. You have carrots, sunflowers, tomatoes, and a variety of flowers. Nice. That's super nice. Okay, so we're just trying to get one nice even layer so that this can roast up nicely in the oven, which we should have turned on, but now my hands are dirty, so I'm not going to wash them until this is done. <laughs> you can't beat me, Rush. Oh, I'm sure you can, though. There will be something. Gotta keep me on my toes, man. Oh, you can tell that this is the trim from the strip loin. It's just like an off cut piece. When Sammy and I cut it up, so there's that. And you don't have to season this. I typically don't like to season the meat if we're gonna use it for broth because it might get too salty. So we're just gonna leave it plain and roast it like this. I would love to wash my hands, but the dishwasher is using the faucet. Okay, let's turn our oven on pretty high. I'd go something like 450. If you want to get some nice browning action on there, create those flavors. Elvin reminds you of the Jack Pepin story where he was driving with his wife in France and saw someone selling rabbits. He bought one and wrung its neck. Freaking out the vendor who intended the rabbits to be sold as pets. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, lemon. And then you can start the farm. It'll be perfect. Land out here is getting so, so hard to buy. It's insane. Like most of the farming land here is owned by like a lot of old people that aren't using the land, but they don't want to sell it to like anyone else outside of their family. It's very, very difficult to come by farmland here now. And if you do come by it, whoo, it's going to cost a pretty penny. <laughs> Elvin, looking at a plate of rare meat. Okay, so I'm going to post the original recipe for Pineapple Delight just so you guys can kind of get an idea about what it is. I used to request this dessert all the time. Betty made it quite a bit and it really is delicious, but I don't think I remember her putting icing sugar or anything like that in it. Okay, so... It's typically made in a 13 by 9 pan, but I use this guy today. So this is a tart pan and the bottom comes out, which is why it's a tart pan. So that's what we're going to use for the crust instead. Combine the ground cracker crumbs and butter, press into your pan, bake for 10 minutes. 
Okay, and then you make another layer with butter, icing, sugar, and eggs. Pour that over the crust once it's baked and then bake it again for 10 to 12 minutes. So it makes it kind of like gooey and delicious, but it'll stay together really well. So I thought I'd try this in a tart instead. My day was good, Steve. Went to the farm this morning, did a lot of weeding. All we did was weed the beets one full row, which there were so many weeds, like you couldn't even see the beets. And we weeded parsley and celery with a hoe. I was hoeing around today. <laughs> but it was good. Only like one minor, minor cut. I just like clipped my hand on the side of the hoe when it was on the ground and it like actually cut me open. I was like, that's sharp. Holy. And that's it. Okay, so we can mix up our graham crumbs and butter. So three cups of graham crumbs and three quarters of a cup of butter. That might be too much for that pan, but I don't know how to tweak the recipe so it's a little bit smaller. Well, if I have leftover ingredients, maybe I'll just make like a smaller tart. I have a couple of ramekins that I could fill something that can be baked in weeding is that a bc thing yeah it's a gardening thing and the best part about these pans is that you don't have to line them because the bottom pops out and you just cut right on that bottom part <laughs> you loved my appearance thank you Very nice of you. Puff weeding. No, no, no. We were good. That's a large amount of meat. Well, I'm making the broth first with that. And we should be able to pull some meat off of there, but there is a lot of fat, which is key here because that's going to create our flavor. And you know I always feed an army buff. I always cook in the excess. Plus I love like packing soups away. Whenever there's extra soup, I always just jar it up and throw it in the freezer. It's easy to pull out for a quick lunch. Tomorrow's my first day, yeah. Back to work, guys. I honestly, I can't believe I've been off for five months already. That is very, very weird. So I think I enjoyed my time off. I don't have any regrets. No regrets. Girls like bigmeats.com. <laughs> oh, it's your first time in. Welcome in, Moo Kid. I stream, so my schedule is just changing this week. So I'm going to be streaming Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursday, Fridays. Wednesday is off. And not weekends because I work. Not including the staging. No regrets. No regrets. Thanks, Elvin. Honestly, I'm very, very excited to work at this restaurant because their values are in sync with mine. It's kind of like full circle because the restaurant also uses produce from the farm I work at, which is freaking awesome. So like, not only do I work at the farm, but probably some of the stuff I work on, actually I get to cook with as well later, not just at home. So for me, that's pretty cool. And the restaurant's really good. It's like the one fine dining restaurant in Souk. Aw, thanks Lemon. Yeah, I was able to find a part-time job that I think is going to work with my schedule. I didn't have to cut anything out, except I guess a little bit more time with Sammy, which kind of sucks, but we have done worse things, that's for sure. 
half or three quarters of a cup of butter here. Growing fat stacks of cash, yeah. I wish. Believe me, I'm not getting paid that well. And we are just gonna melt this butter and then mix it into our gram crumbs. This is so much. Welcome to Desserts with Kate. They are neither dairy-free or gluten-free. What do I do for a living? I'm a pro chef. That sounds so weird to me still, Elvin. We'll do 30 second increments. Thanks for the follow, Moo Kid. Welcome in. I'm not leaving you guys, just one day. Just it sucks that I work on Wednesday too because that's my laundry day. And I have to figure out when I can do laundry. <laughs> LSD cam. She's wild. It's so much better. I know buff. Like what? Oh, dang it. This obnoxious microwave. Okay, a couple more seconds. I need to remember to stop that thing before it beeps. So otherwise you can't stop the beeps. Laundry stream, yeah, pretty much. And you think that's a lot of butter buff, but another three quarters of a cup is going into that like topping for the crust. It's almost sickening. If there's something you're bad at, it's cooking. I think you will learn a lot. I am just speaking from what people tell me. Another 12 packages of butter going into the bathtub. 12 packages of butter. Yeah. I like butter. What's up, Big Steve? He's got to go. This is dirt nest. But believe me, this pineapple delight is so good. Wild Sammy, yet yeah, it's too late. He already left us. Okay, so that's completely mixed. We will reserve this butter container for our next step after this. Yeah, it better be good, hey? I don't know, after all that sugar yesterday, <laughs> I think I have like contact diabetes. But the jellies did firm up in the fridge, so they look really good. And we are going to be using one today in the Welsh Rarebit. So that's what Jamie puts on his toast before he puts the cheese sauce on. So that's why I made that yesterday. And to press down the crumbs, we'll just use our hands. Let's maybe do the outside layer first. So up the sides, and then we can press down the bottom part. So I think it's pretty important to still get this part nice and even. So I just kind of squish it up the side and press it in. But here's the thing with these tart pans is you don't want it to be like, super, I don't know, super shallow here. Like you still want to press it down pretty hard. 
and I'm, I was going to make smaller tarts, but then I realized I didn't have any of the metal tart shells to use and was not going to the store today for that. So here we are using this big pen. We're just going to roll with it. And then after we finish pressing the sides of the crust, then we can press down the bottom part and make it nice and even so that we have no thin spots or really thick spots. I know I said this was probably going to be too much crust, but I think it will be like just enough. Is this a crumble? No, we're making a pineapple delight tart. One of my favorite old school desserts. I'm gonna be making it fancy Kate style now that I'm all grown up. Aw, thanks for the nice words, Elvin. And they are all true. I do try my best to explain everything and be there for people if they are having some cooking issues. Yay. So that's our oven for our beef. Let's just finish off this outer crust first. And then I'll throw that in the oven. We are throwing it in the oven. Don't just place it in. <laughs> you gotta throw it. Okay, and let's set a 15 minute timer. We'll check it at that point. You have to invent a crust presser. Yeah, like this one, it sucks pressing it into these pans because I do have, I have a baby, like a tart shell press from my grandma. Just trying to find it over here which is why I wanted to do this with the tarts like this thing guys don't laugh but this is actually for tarts so that's for the mini ones to press your crust in and this is for the big ones and then you just put your whatever amount of crust you need in and then just push this down and it fills the entire tart but since I don't have tart shells I wasn't able to show you but I'll have to make sure that we do use it at some point So now kind of press down the sides here. Yay, for dishwasher being done. Press this down first. So it's not super thick as well. And then we'll have enough to press down into the bottom. I know this is not the easiest thing, but I promise it's worth it. How are you, Duncan? Welcome in, man. You've not made a crumble since high school. Crumbles are very easy. At least in my opinion, like Sammy makes crumbles and he hates baking. pretty good. I think it looks really good actually. Just washing my hands. And now we will wait for this to go into the oven. But we can mix up that other set of ingredients and also whip our topping up while we're waiting for this. How does that sound? 
You've never made a tart. Is it easy? It's easy, Steve. Like, all you need is graham crumbs and butter. And then if you don't want to make the filling, just buy a can of pre-made pie filling if you really want to. And you just put it in the tart and top it with whatever you want, whipped cream. That's good, Steve. I'm glad I make your day better. I love that. Oh my God, three quarters of a cup of butter and two and a quarter cups of icing sugar. <sighs> There's too much sugar, guys. Okay, let me flip this dishwasher around as well. Because it is kind of my counter during the day. It's like my little addition to my island. <laughs> Other three quarters of a cup of butter. We need two eggs and some vanilla. I press the crust down really, really tight into the pan. Cake recipe, one ton of butter, half a ton of sugar, mix lightly. Wait, you forgot the flour though. You can't just make butter and sugar, then you're just making caramel, you silly. Yeah, I pressed it pretty hard. I don't think it's gonna fall apart. Like it seems like it's holding together really well. <laughs> okay, vanilla has to come out anyways. Vanilla. Like how many times have we used this bottle and we like barely have made a dent? So it says mix together the butter, icing, sugar, eggs, and vanilla with an electric mixer until smooth. I guess I'll have to get the mixer out then. All right, ingredients. Move on over. Gotta make room for the ink hearse room. You love making pies? Yeah, if you like making pies, the tart will be effortless. Effortless, I tell you. Salad recipe, take one ribeye. <laughs> love it. Best salad ever. Chug the vanilla. Man, it's way too expensive to chug. And I doubt I could do that anyways. That would probably ruin vanilla for me. And that would be a sad, sad thing. Okay, we're setting up. This is where I'm at right now. you that I can't stream on Wednesday now just because you wanted to stream with me that day or cook with me I am pretty sad vanilla must be treated with respect have I made a cake on stream oh yeah we have made a couple okay so we need to soften up our butter let's come back over here I have made a rolled cake before. 
what else? I made a black forest cake, a chocolate chocolate cake for my birthday. <laughs> Aw, your sadness outweighs the happiness that you have for me. Thanks, man. That is so nice. Okay, let's line up our butter. To the measurement. I love these things on the packages. Yeah, only three days a week. So I should be okay with that. Okay, soften this up. Black forest cake, yeah, it's my favorite. And I learned from Sam's mom how to make it, so I do it really proper. That's so much, <laughs> yeah, I know about Killing us softly with the butter. I like butter. Dead. What is this? What? I'm making pineapple delight. Oh yeah. <laughs> What is this? Is what dreams are made of, Sammy. It's okay if the butter is melted a bit, believe me. It, it will come back together. We didn't take it too far. As long as it's all, not all melted, you'll be okay. You're better than Sammy. I don't know about that one, Steve. I mean, I'm obliged to not agree with that. <laughs> Vanilla. Get our eggies out, which I have duck eggs, so I guess it's just gonna be a little extra eggy. Or I can just do one egg with one yolk instead. Let's try that. Has anyone ever had pineapple delight before? Or is it just me? Don't take it personal. <laughs> You've never heard of it? Dang. Well, I'm happy that I get to show you guys then. All right, yolk. Get in there. And now the sugar. Two and a quarter cups. Ugh. Okay, so you guys know that I'm not going to be sweetening up the whipped topping for this then. Like, you know I'm not going to do that. That is so much sugar already. And I don't like overly sweet desserts. I don't know what's going on upstairs. but the kitchen has disappeared. Ah. Overflow. Oh, you found a local seller for duck eggs. Yes. That is so awesome. But they haven't gotten back to you. Well, I hope that they do. Okay, that is it. That is all. This is why you're more of a savory person. Yeah, like desserts that are too sweet just kind of like ruin it. Cause you can only have a couple bites until you're sick of it. So 
we can just whip that on low. Yolks for flans. Oh man, it makes such a nice flan. I see what you're throwing. I'm catching it, Lemon. Whip it. Like so far everything I've used duck eggs in for baking has turned out really well. You're excited. Yes, I love the puns. There are so many culinary puns to be used. Okay, that looks good to me. So it might fit just back into here. I think that's possible. So that was really easy. And now we're gonna have to rinse this out, wash it out with some soap so that we can use it to whip up the cream cheese. Everything is greasy. Everything's just covered in butter. You have the science of making food. I think that's why I really enjoy it too, Steve. So there's that. We are just checking on our beef that's roasting for our broth right now. Oh, there's a lot of fat rendering out, but it definitely needs probably another 15. And like I said, all that fat is going to be flavor. But how is this going to go over the crust? Like, oh, what? I'm kind of worried. I guess we could have skipped this step, but then I would have been worried that the crust would have fallen apart. Like Lemon said that it typically does. So maybe this is what you have to do, Lemon make this crazy concoction of butter, eggs, and sugar. Hi, Liz. You're here but not here. Okay, sounds good. Hope your day is well. So BRB. Is this killing you guys right now? Okay, just going over to the sink and washing this up.
30, so I think we're doing pretty good still. Once we bang out this part, it'll be really easy for us to focus on everything else. Oh, Matt, you love food, and that's why you love cooking so much. Yeah, hello, I'm Kate, I love food. Yeah, school is done, Steve. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the stream, making some sugary and buttery <laughs> concoctions. It's terrifying. They're selling a dozen duck eggs for six dollars US. That is what we pay. That is very, very good price, Lemon. So they just contacted you? Yeah, we pay six bucks a dozen. Whereas, like, you can't even get chicken eggs for that price in the store here. Yeah, Buff. Let's talk about some cultural things in Wales. Because I don't know any. <laughs> They haven't contacted you yet. You just looked at the ad. Okay, they put an ad out. Sweet. Just wiping off the mixer. And then we can whip it. We will whip it good. You're scrambled about those prices. Why, what do you pay? What do you pay, Buff? Channel class trip to Buffs. 40 top is no problem. Yeah. Fun. I'm going to eat at Buffs. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine if this was like the magic school bus. I'm Miss Frizzle. Dark's pain, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I guess I don't need this recipe anymore, but we have a brick of cream cheese that I just pulled out before the stream, so it's a little bit softened. sizes here of stuff so the pineapple should be able to fill the bottom of the tart so we got this much pineapple yesterday right where's dark prince i think that will fill the whole bottom of the tart at least one nice small layer so we'll do this separate layer. 
but typically the pineapple is mixed into your whip. But I'm gonna loosen this up a bit with cream as well. So it'll be a lot lighter than just heavy cream cheese. You lost 10 pounds this month? That's so good, Steve. I am, I think I need to do that as well. Because some of my clothes are not fitting anymore. Um. I'm just gonna cut this brick up into four different pieces just so it's easier on the mixer. You're eating a big old salad, nice. I need to get back on my salad game. So put this in first, whip it up until it's nice and soft and smooth, and then we'll put the whipping cream in. You put everything together right now, it's gonna stay pretty lumpy, I think. That's what typically happens. Two hundred and thirty pounds of sex. Oh my god, Buff. You guys and your puns, I can't stop. Am I left-handed? I am, boss. I am not ambidextrous though. I know, I know, shocking. Go, go, go. Okay, it's finally coming off the beaters now. would be really good with mascarpone too. It's just a little bit softer than cream cheese. It's also more expensive too. You're poaching my best yolks. How are you guys still going? tart crust. And then assemble it, hopefully. And then we'll work on our soup. Uh... Okay, I think this is good now. Oh, yeah. Okay, so a touch more. trying to stay on the sunny side up of life. Touch more vanilla because it's so good with whipped cream and cream cheese. the whipped cream to this just so it mixes in nice and doesn't get chunky instead of swearing at each other guys I don't know what the hell happened with that I have to contact like three different people but it seems like all is well now Rook did his job and that's all that matters. And I 
did open my Discord to like 26 messages from that person yesterday. So I'm just gonna let them uh, give them a little time out for a bit. Kind of like a stalker-ish to me, so I don't know. Being timed out on Twitch does not require messaging me 26 messages on Discord saying you didn't do anything. Just saying. That's my opinion on the ish. Let the dog sleep. Exactly. And we just carry on. was a couple of rotten eggs, yep. Shadow just here for the food. Okay, so we still want a bit more whipping cream. So we're gonna whip this until it's nice and light. Well, I'm not measuring this out. I'm not following a recipe right now. The regulars are the main reason. Besides Kate, you know. <laughs> Stalker-esque, yeah. Bye, Omat. Bye, man. Have a good one. Thanks for chilling with us for a bit. I hope everything goes well for you. Stay good with your sleep, especially when you're super busy. Love you, man. I'll just hatch a plan and make them feel awkward. I'm not gonna say who got blocked. I'm not gonna like personally call them out. Cause I don't know how I feel yet about this situation. But what I will say is this person is not a sub. And what Sammy said, his opinion last night was maybe just like really take care of your subs because if someone's just a viewer, like it's sad to say, but that doesn't mean too much, right? Whereas, like, you always have to trust your subs first because they're always there for you. And some viewers just, like, go crazy. And I guess that's it. Liz is back. crust bakes at 350 for 10 minutes so we'll lower the temp let it cool off for a couple minutes you can prop this open a little bit even though it's gonna heat up the house you're just a viewer no you're not thunder like that's what i mean like this, that person was pretty recent in my stream compared to like all of you regulars who I see every day. You know what I mean. The mix looks amazing. Oh, I wasn't like crazy stuff, Lemon. I honestly didn't see what happened, but then there was like kind of um, crazy shit in chat, but we'll carry on. Let's get back to our whip. So we're just gonna whip it a little bit more until it's a little bit more stiff. Sometimes you see a different side of a person once they are stressed. Yes, exactly. Steve, you know what I mean. All of the regulars and the subs. You missed all the good drama, it's true. So we just need to be careful here because of using the whipping cream. We don't want to over whip it because then we'll make butter. I think that's what we're looking for. Nice. So it's nice and firm. It holds up. And it's not just going to like flatten out everywhere. 
all over the tart. So that looks good to me. And let's just give it a taste. Mmm. Like a little hint of cream cheese. Wow. And vanilla. But it's not sweet. So we'll let the rest of the tart be the sweet part. Honey, what? See you guys. Just spoilt by Opterix. Thank you so much, man. You've given five gifted subs in this channel already. Like what? That is unreal. You're almost at death's count. I think he's at eight. Thank you. Thank you. I can't thank you enough. That's amazing. And you guys, you know what that means. You're entered into the apron giveaway too. Hi, Rook. How are you? <laughs> Liz, hi, Took. Tool. <laughs> so good. Part of the fam now. I love that. No more ads. Yay. Oh, I forgot about that subscriber perk as well. Yeah, his bank is just going to suspend his card for suspicious activity. <laughs> You guys might win. Yeah, you guys might win Lemon's apron if she lets you. Lemon, you need a yellow apron. And they do make them. They're actually really nice, the yellow color. Whenever our, our old sous chef would wear his, his yellow one. I would always think of him as like a Tonka truck just because it was so yellow and he was like a pretty big guy. <laughs> Who wants to clean off the beaters though? Tired Rook, long day at work and stayed up way too late. Dang, hi Lauren. Glad to hear you're here with us. Yeah, thanks for doing what you do, Rook. You have an Ina Garten signed apron. You never use it. She's too messy. Aprons can be used for anything. Yes, not just the kitchen. I'm happy you said that, Thunder. Okay, let us just transfer our whip into something else. It does have metal straps. Yeah, this apron does not mess around. Exactly, yeah, you can use your apron to garden. I have done it before. It's comfy. This one's not heavy. My other ones are a little bit more heavy. The, the fabric's a bit thicker. But this one, he kept nice and light for summertime. Hello, Harry. How are you? You'll never take it off. You'll sleep with it. Honestly, it is very comfortable. Like half the time I forget it on. <laughs> After dinner, just walking around with my apron on still. Oh, like look how nice and smooth that is. It almost looks like vanilla ice cream, hey? You can use it as a butcher, yep woodworking really anything bartending that's good that you're good harry have I tried milk alternatives like lactose-free coconut oat almond milk in cooking? I used to drink almond milk in my smoothies. I do love coconut milk, but you know it has a strong flavor, so it can't be substituted with everything. But other than that, I haven't tried too much else. Like I've never had lactose-free milk that kind of creeps me out like how is it milk i don't get it 
Are you dairy free, Moss? Is that why you're asking? Like I love to use coconut milk whenever I make soups because it blends so nice with vegetables. I found A2 milk good for lactose free. Yeah, I do. You, oh, you think almond milk tastes like dirt buff? I don't know. I always bought one that was vanilla, but unsweetened. You guys know I love my vanilla. Steve, the ice cream was really, really good. I believe it's all gone. <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore. Okay, there is our whipped topping. I'm gonna put that into the fridge. Yeah, how does a huge bowl of salad fit in your stomach? Well, just because it compresses so much. It's the same thing like when you cook spinach, right? Is it cooks down to almost nothing and you're just left there being confused as to where it all went. Okay, mixer can go away. I'm just gonna do a mini cleanup. And I believe this oven is cooled down. And I'm going to put this on a baking pan too. So I feel like the butter and stuff might seep out the bottom. And I don't wanna be cleaning up a mess in the oven. Does this fit on here? Not quite. The bigger one. You actually like lactose-free milk more than almond milk. Fair enough. Like I said, I've never tried it, so I don't know the difference. And I don't like, I don't like to drink almond milk just by itself. I've always mixed it into my smoothies and that's it. You drink lactate. You went through the almond milk phase a few years back. Why does everyone hate almond milk? I think it's not bad. But I would always choose coconut milk over almond milk for sure. But that's just because I like coconut so much. Almonds don't even have boobies. <laughs> Lemons like no. A rose con leche. Yum. So good. If you were a duck, then you would be laying eggs. Your dad drinks four liters of milk in a day? Holy, my stomach could not handle that much dairy. I drink maybe a cup a day. But does it make a difference consistency wise in cooking? I would say yes, Moss, because the milk has like butter solids in it, right? Like there's still dairy in there, which helps to kind of bind stuff. So without that, it will make a little bit of a difference. You're a big fan of cereal in the morning. I used to love cereal in the morning. I ate it a lot when I was younger. Now, not so much. As I grew up, I kind of switched to yogurt with granola and fruit. And now I just blend my breakfast because that's the easiest way to get so many nutrients. Okay, next up, we're gonna make our beef broth in a big pot. But first, I'm gonna go to the bathroom and then we will reconvene. You drink two liters of water a day? That's not that much. I probably drink close to three or four, probably four.
Kidokes. Harry, you ate pizza. Yum. As long as you use the right alternative, then it's fine. Thanks for the info buff. Because I have no experience with that. So it's nice to know that other people have tried it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Armored with the 40 bits. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It <laughs> pisses you off, Steve. Because there's no milk in the morning. Mashed potatoes and a biscuit from Popeye's. Yum. Are their biscuits good? I've heard that the Popeye's biscuits are actually not bad. You only like bananas when they're on the slightly green side. Not a fan of ripe bananas. Dang, dude. I need the banana to be ripe. Otherwise, it's weird and starchy to me. Got a big pot out. Might as well get two. They're way better than KFC's biscuits. I don't even know KFC has biscuits. Let's do this. I also have, this is what Sammy left for me in the freezer. Beef for soup. I believe it's just some trim from a roast that we did or something. So that's going into the pot. I don't know if you've asked me that, Liz. What's my go-to Chinese meal? I really love cashew chicken and fried rice. But I don't know. It's honestly too hard to pick for Chinese. Because I love ginger beef too. Plus dumplings and all that fun stuff. So I don't know. There's too many things. KFC has food. Shocking. Oh, that's good. That's going to make some really nice meat to put into our soup. Okay, the rest of this. I'm going to pour it into the pot. Look at all those juices. Scrub all of that stuff off of the pan. It's all your flavor. Just because the skin is brown does not mean the banana is bad. Okay, this did not fill up the pot as much as I thought it would. But that's okay. We will cover that with cold water, just enough to cover the meat. And we'll probably let it go, it's four o'clock now. I'll let it go for half an hour because we still need the meat to be able to cook through in the soup. starts to simmer we'll turn it back down so you don't want to overcook the meat if we're going to use it in the soup just want to kind of poach it nice low and slow dumplings so good like soup dumplings when i first ate those in vancouver they changed my life <laughs> Mm 
Yeah, when they get too brown, semi-transparent banana bread for the win. Hey, feeding. Hey, Kev, how are you? Is slow, cold cooking always better? When you're making a broth, yes. So if you want your broth to be really nice and clear, always start with cold water. If you start with hot water, it actually has a bunch of impurities in it and it will get super cloudy and weird looking. So always start with cold water first. That is one of the basics of culinary school. Okay, so next up, I think we're going to start to prep up our call. So all of our soup stuff, we can chop all the veg, prep the bacon and the beef, and then that way it's ready to go. the crap out of me <laughs> just because it glows so red it's like is this thing going to blow up or what oh wow hey this crab baked up really nice it really puffed up though i'm hoping that this is going to settle back down because look how much it's filling the tart shell oh yeah okay she's gonna settle back down just poke it, I guess. <laughs> Find out. The last call you made was with ostrich meat. Cold water for meat when you're making broth, yes. 80 Celsius, five hours in the oven versus 200 Celsius for one hour. It totally depends on what you're making moss. Like obviously some stuff is better cooked slower and lower, but then other stuff you want to cook it hot and fast because there's probably not as much tissue to break down in there either. Okay. Back to my pineapple delight recipe. Just need to see the baking temp for the second layer of filling there. The dirty layer. Okay, so we're cooling the crust completely. And then we will put on the second layer and bake it for another 10 to 12. And then let it cool off again. So I'm going to transfer that pan onto a wire wrap. That way it'll cool off a lot quicker. Get that airflow. I'm gonna take it off of the stove as well because that's warm now from both the oven being on and the burner. She's just going onto the side now. Dunzo. Okay, Opteryx. So a call is basically just a meat stew or soup with a broth, typically made with lamb, but it can also be made with beef and bacon. So that's what I'm doing today. And then it always has turnips, carrots, and potatoes. I don't have turnips today, but I do have carrots and potatoes. Oh, and leeks. Leeks are very, very important too in this. And I'm putting in zucchini, mushrooms, and some peas to put a little bit more extra veg into it. I know, the crust looks really nice, hey? It's looking good. Your internet died? No. Smells 
weed, leeks, lamb, and potatoes. You heard it here first. And then the method that they make it. Add everything into your pot and brown it with lard or bacon fat. Remove the veg, add the beef, brown it all over, return the veg to the pan with the bacon, bay leaf, and thyme. I need a bay leaf. And then cover it, so it says cover the meat and veg with cold water and bring it to a boil. Lower it and simmer it for two hours until the beef is tender. So like I said, always start with cold water and it'll stay nice and clear. But we're making our broth separate from this, so it's gonna be a little bit different. And it uses leeks and onions, but I'm just going to use leeks today. I don't want to overpower the flavor of the leek with onion. So I got two really nice leeks from the store. Lots of usable white on them, so we only have to cut off around that much. There's a leek in my boat. I love that, Steve. I love that movie. I always hoped that someone would get that reference. Lemon's going into lurk mode. Sounds good. Yeah, one of us. One of us. <laughs> you ordered the ingredients for your Irish red ale. Yay! I'm excited. So first thing we're doing, taking off the end and just slice off the tops. I typically like to slice where this starts to split because that's where it starts to get tough from up here but talking to some people at the farm there's a girl from Colombia there and she said they use the whole leek like whenever her mom cooked for her when she was younger they would always use the whole leek so for us to throw that away like she thinks that's a waste whereas here we say that it's too tough to use which is funny. So we'll cut it in half, and then you will see whenever you use leeks that there is always some sandy layers. So you always need to wash it before you continue to prep it. Always do that first, because otherwise you'll just have sand everywhere. You've had call with onions, shallots, leeks, and spring onions. So as long as there's leeks, you're good. When did my stream start to get over 30 to 40 viewers daily? I would have to look back, Steve. I don't know if it started right after I was featured on the front page or not, but I'm thinking that was around the same time. Okay, just wash in the leaks. Fresh, fresh. Make sure there's no more sand on the board. It was surprisingly not overpowering. Oh, it had all of those onions, different onions in it. That's nuts so. Okay, so we are going to chop this now 
You cut your leeks in rings or seas. About the time that I moved. Yeah, armored. So probably about the time that my stream quality <laughs> improved. Are leeks part of the onion family? Yes. Yes, they are. So now we're just going to slice these like that thick. Probably say close to a quarter inch. I don't want to cut it too small for this soup. I really enjoy leeks, so pretty excited about this. Steve, the points is through the stream elements and you can like play roulette with them. I haven't turned on any of the other games yet. But I think our, there are some games in chat that you guys can play with the points if you want it. Ah, uh, the onions sting in my, my wound from today. So leeks are like a very mild onion. They're really, really nice. Leeks are low in carb? Cool. So she can only eat low carb veg. Very interesting. That's good to know. Dual. Going on a dual. Milder and slightly sweeter. Yes, exactly. So let's get into our carrots. Because these two things will be sauteed together in the pot. The zucchini and the mushrooms will be put into the soup a little bit later so they don't go too mushy. And the potatoes will go in pretty early on as well. Liz, you won, you won a bone. Onions are not low in carbs weird that is very weird who is this good morning only you're done you're done you're done <laughs> you like your leeks raw so you cut yours chunky. Oh, that makes sense, Buff. Okay, let's cut this down just a little bit more. We'll go bite size with the carrot. So this is super thin, so I'm not gonna cut that down any further. This one, we will quarter. That's my rule of soup. As long as it can fit on a spoon and you can easily eat it, that's all that matters when you're cutting your veg for it. Or if you really want to go all out, then practice some knife skills and cut everything really nice and fine. Pretend you're a fancy French chef. Liz feels bad, man. Okay, our broth is just slowly simmering now. That's perfect. to have 
the soup going by at least 5 p.m. So I got 45 minutes to prep all the veg up, make the broth, and then put it together. I think that's doable to gamble. The points are to gamble, that is all. Yeah, it's not actually currency. The currency is accrued by the amount of minutes that you watch the stream, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm gonna try for these. This small guy. Ashi. You did decide to come down. Yeah, I better get your little carrot snacks back over the compost. Ashi. Come here. Where are you at? Holy. He's wildin'. Ready? Good girl. Okay, get down. Down. Good catch. Okay, on to the zooks. It's quite a bit of them. And the peas, which I just laughed at. Yeah, she's such a good girl. It's true. Laugh at the peas today when I looked at them. They're actually starting to sprout in the bay. <laughs> They're doing their own thing. So we'll just take those ones out. Give those ones to Posh and hopefully the peas don't grow in her belly. Sprouted peas. Yeah, you're on a cool down now. Steve, cool it down. Teasy, hosting the stream with a viewer. Thank you. Welcome in. <laughs> Look at this dog's just a pee eating machine. <gasps> that one you missed. Okay, one more. So not too many peas. Just using it up. First, let's take our stickers off of this, which actually are not the funnest because when they get wet, they just like fall apart. <laughs> See? Hey. She's like, I don't want carrot peel. There's way better stuff. It's only for zucchini. <laughs> you don't understand, Steve. Just put roulette and 200 and you should be fine. I think you just, it cooled you down automatically because too many people were doing the same thing. It's just a setting. Cool it down. Several years ago, you used to brew with a guy who had a bunch of dogs. You would occasionally see dog's hair floating in the wart. Love it. It's natural, man. See, Steve, you won some bones. Okay, so now our zook. 
think we'll just quarter them because they're pretty small. Yeah, extra protein. size of the carrots is what we're looking for here. Two thousand you roulette? I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> Steve's going all in. Buff, have you used your new knife yet? There's just a cool down. You got to cool it down, man. Take it easy. The massive one, yes. Yeah, the new really shiny one that you just got. be perfect for it, I'm sure. Fish, come here. Come here. She's like, I got that. You just commissioned a new knife that you're now waiting for to arrive. Nice. Liz, you just love her. She's so good. I taught her how to do that just recently. She knows the deal. No noses on the cutting board. Blacksmith streamer. Okay, that's the guy that you put in Discord. Let me know if they're on today. I would love to check them out. Drop the kids off there when the stream's done. Okay, on to our mushrooms and then we'll do our potatoes, which for the potatoes, we have to put them into water after we cut them because we're not gonna use them right away and they will start to oxidize if they sit out. He is on now, cool. Well, let me know if he's still on when we're done. We'll go see him. Okay, our mush. We'll cut into like six pieces. Some nice chunks. Hey, Vyun. Glad you popped in here, man. I'm not getting late for you. You wash your mushrooms, Liz? I don't love to wash mushrooms because they just soak up so much liquid. But for this instance, since it's going in soup, yeah, you could. But if you were gonna fry them up, that would not be a very good idea. But I totally understand why. They are grown in poop. But I just like to believe that a little bit of fungus helps out for digestion. <laughs> Definitely never gotten sick from a mushroom. Old Man Craft, thanks for the follow. That the blacksmith guy? Okay, there's our extra bench. We can pile that on there. Soup set up is coming together. And I think I'm gonna peel these potatoes. Just because the skin gets kind of weird in the soup if you don't blend it. And the 
skin is not super thin on this either. So that is why I decided to peel it. It's never late for you. I like the manure, it's true. Not sure the call with the mushroom. <laughs> Not sure the call will have mushroom for the mushrooms. I'm sorry. You never sleep, Vune. That terrifies me. I would not be alive if I'd never slept. You don't like the texture of cooked mushrooms, so you'd rather have them raw, Steve? Most people think they're like too spongy raw. Are raw mushrooms safe to eat though? Yeah. People look at you weird. Yeah, that's the thing is like most people don't like raw mushrooms. But there is a select few of us that do. Like I am totally down with raw mushrooms. Depends on the variety though. Like mostly just the white buttons is what I eat raw. Everything else I cook. You go to sleep at 10.30, Steve? Sometimes I do too. I've been thinking about your last cooking stream and how much you wish you had a third camera. You bought a cam for Saturday? That's awesome. Man, your setup's better than mine. Yoon's <laughs> just killing it. I love that, man. Go all in. Why not? Lemon. What is going on? What's going on? A mycologist you've listened to recommends to always cook mushrooms. I believe that. I believe it in dog. I'll have to get the head cam, imagine. <laughs> That would be hilarious. Okay, I'm running out of bowls. The struggle, guys. Um, um, I know what I'm gonna use. A Tupperware. Betty's Tupperware, shh, don't tell her. That's what we're gonna use for the potatoes. What did you do? Uh, bungee cord hit me in the face. You're so lucky you didn't hit your eye. Are you okay? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sammy getting the ouchies while working. You're a techie though, so toys, yep. Pacific Northwest has mushroom pickers that will defend their picking territory. Ah, uh, yeah violently okay so bite size for our potatoes as well that way they'll cook up pretty quick there's something in mushrooms our bodies can't digest so cooked is recommended but it's still okay to eat raw it might just affect certain people is my guess because i've never had an issue with raw mushrooms but it's not like I eat them very often. Pulsh! We got a pulsh in here. What? Hi, pulsh. 
How is the East Coast? My aunt just moved to St. John's. So that means I'll have to, Sammy and I will have to come out and visit now. It's actually not snowing. Not so. How's everything been going, man? Hopefully your stream has been good. So we're going to cover this with cold water and then it won't oxidize. Oh, mayflies. Yes. Okay. There's our potatoes, the rest of our veg. Now we just have a couple of herbs to chop up. But first, I think we're going to finish the tart so that it can bake for another 10 to 12 minutes. I gotta to top it with the topping. It should be cooled off now. Oh yeah. The crust looks great, by the way. I don't think it's gonna fall apart at all. Everything is probably two months behind, fact. So it's 350 again for the crust. This is where we put this dirty ass stuff on. Like look at the butter slick on the pan already. Let's just add more butter and sugar though. Stream's been going great. Got a few shifts in of work, but had to call in sick. Boo. At least everything else has been going good, Polish. Great to hear. Just been grinding. Chronic. 10 days till the giveaway, yep. So now it says just drop this in spoonfuls over. I don't think I'm going to be using this all. Ugh. That's the egg white snot. Let's just drop that over there. This is going to make the crust like syrupy and delicious. And it'll help hold it together, I think. Okay, that's like the max amount that I'm putting on. <laughs> Just add another pack. Yeah, just go. I can't. Why not? I can't physically do it. Why? Because it's meant for a 13 by 9. Oh. <laughs> well, shoot. I guess that's Why was the new egg happy? Because he just got laid. I love it. Okay, so we'll put that aside. I don't think the oven's hot just yet. I think it will heat for us. Let's hope so. Let's get into a couple of herbs. So I'm gonna do thyme and rosemary in the call. And then I will garnish it with just some chopped parsley. Freshen it up a bit. Thought that would be a good idea. Milf, how are you, man? How's the Fortnite's going? Are you streaming right now? So many streamers, so little time. Nice yolks. Thanks, Thunder. Not right now, Milf. All good, man. Gotta take our breaks when we can. Hopefully all is well in your world. The yoke's on you. Let's give this a little choppy chop. Now 
now some rosemary. Drugs? Nah, this is not that kind of herb, man. I mean, you probably could smoke it, but I don't know <laughs> what it would do to you. We're gonna chop this stuff pretty fine. It would do good things, Annie. It's green, it works. Yeah, I've never been uh, that desperate, I guess. So I think I'm just gonna put these fresh herbs in with the zucchini, the mushrooms and the peas. They can go in at that time. Cilantro is like a drug. Not for all people, though. Then you're the addict. Your love is my drug. Love it. Bless you, Sammy. Cilantro relaxes you? I did not know that. 800 plus followers. That's tough, MILF. I've just been grinding. We're five months in already. I feel like that's accurate. Oh, I didn't, uh, didn't update my follower thing, hey? Can you tell it's been a busy day? Again, again, Kate, get on your ish. Huh? Oh, it's true, it's not. See, Kate's had a crazy, uh, crazy couple of days. Starting to figure out life again. Yeah, I got a new job, man. had to lose one streaming day so for me that's still a win I'm gonna go a little bit more fine with this but either way chopped parsley looks like grass clipping so don't be too worried <laughs> about how your parsley looks polished out uh, of the news just came yesterday yeah man I found a part-time job at the best restaurant here so I'm just their summer prep helper. Solid crew of four of us in there. Chef, two guys, and myself. Should be really fun. Chops per minute, yes. Imagine. Okay, so all soup prep, pretty much done. Maybe we should get the meat. Get the meat us going. Do I like the smell of freshly cut grass? Yes, I do. They were cutting the grass at the farm today and it just smells so good. So fresh. Am I a prepper? Yes. I did not want to be a line cook. I removed myself from that situation. Okay, so we got some bacon. Forget guys, we still have to do the Welsh rare bit. I'm gonna take a couple strips of bacon out of here. What about the food truck plans? Are we still gonna do it up? Of course, man. But hopefully, like the plan is to just pay down a couple more debts, and then maybe that will happen.
You learned how to grill a steak. Yes. That is so good. How do you like your steaks cooked, Milf? A doomsday prepper? Man, I would be. I just don't have the money for that right now. Totally want to build an underground shelter though. Save me from the zombies. I'm in. Medium rare. You got it good, kid. You got it good. It's a good pick. You've been eating your refried beans you had made and frozen. You think you got it down pat now. Good. I remember that first, those first couple of batches. You're like, this is wrong. Someone help. You're applying for a dish in Kate's Inevitable Restaurant. I think uh, Butt Burglar has already called the dishwasher duties. But we can stick you somewhere else, Elvin. I think you'd be like a good good uh, window attendant. Or you'd be our marketer. Because <laughs> you could easily talk about all the food. You know all the lingo. Play follow, get me some experience. I've watched Sammy play it. So believe me, I think I know what to do. Rare, a little to undercook for you, and medium, a little too dry. Nice. I like how you're analyzing how you feel about it. At least you know what you like though. A lot of people have no idea how they like their steak cooked. By the love of God, please never order a medium rare steak and then say, I just want a little bit of pink. <laughs> Don't do it. Okay, I'm guessing our oven is hot since it hasn't beeped. Let's put this in 10 minutes. It was bad. Lack of salt. <laughs> Could be the one tweeting everything ahead of time. So we're always swamped. Yes, exactly. We want to sell out every day. That is the whole point. That way the food stays fresh. People have to know what's going on. They will continue to come. Be like, sorry, you gotta come next time. Gotta come earlier. And then we'll have hordes of people lining up for whatever food we desire. What do I wanna put this in? I'll probably just keep it on the cutting board. I'll just kind of slide it into the pot. We've always been more of a fan of back bacon opposed to belly bacon. Really, Buff? Okay, I can't use this knife for this. The chip in it makes it really hard to cut. I love belly bacon. I can't say no to that. Pork belly definitely has a spot in my heart. When you were younger and less worldly, can find you gnawing on the cows in the field, raw. <laughs> yeah, ordering a steak tartare and sending it back to the chef and ask him to cook it. Terrifying. Still the best with the Roman though. Milf, this is actually how you're supposed to cut. You should always keep your index finger on the blade and that way you know where it is at all times and then you'll never cut yourself and that's very very hard to teach people
He wants to make one that specializes in breakfast and brunch foods. I think that's your best bet. To be honest, it's so fast paced. that You can cook breakfast food in like five to 10 minutes. Ready to turn sushi day into sashimi day. What part of the pig is bacon? The belly. This is belly bacon. So for the beef, I'm gonna cut it down smaller just so it doesn't take as long to cook. Let's do that size. And this is just basic stewing beef. Doesn't say where it came from. That's why it's in kind of weird shapes as well. Your old roommate and you made pancetta from pork belly. How was it? I love pancetta. I have that in the fridge for Friday for the bolognese for Liz. Viune, getting ready to sleep soon. It's about that time for you. Yeah, what's the fun in that not cutting yourself? And just before I forget these pieces, let's process those first. All of the meats. We got six minutes to crush this. I am gonna take off this fat though, because that's gonna cook up weird. It also would be cool because you see so many office workers always complaining about being hungry. Yes, exactly. Post up at like in front of an office area and you will be set. Hey, Mulan. I have looked into it. All I can say is please never talk about my bobs on stream again. And you can stay. The fat is the flavor. Yeah, this is the wrong kind of fat though. Milf. This is more like stringy. It's not going to cook up the way that you think it is. And that's why we are making the broth instead. So there's a lot of the beef trim fat in there. And there is a little bit of gristle in this piece too. So I'm just gonna cut that out. Makes you wonder when our caveman ancestors started cooking meat. Yeah. I mean, how they figured out fire, I have no idea, but it's so cool still. You were in the Bronx the whole day today? It was a joke. I don't know. You shouldn't joke about that stuff, but I'll forgive you. Happens again, though. You know what happens. <laughs> no more Mulan. We, uh, we try to keep this chat pretty clean, even though most of us are adults in here. Just be respectful. That's about it. A poutine truck in Rochester. Oh, so good. I would totally open a poutine truck. Okay, we have three minutes left on our tart in the oven. Mill, if you're nine, no, you're not. You're like 16, 17. That's what Sammy told me. Okay, see how this is like super stringy? I can't even cut through it with that knife. Insanity. 
Let's go. You're gone. beef ribs on Saturday. That's what I get to come home to? Oh, wrong knife. I'm in. The fire started with lightning. Yeah. Imagine how scary that would be seeing that for the first time. It's so hot. What do we do? Buttered toast, Elvin. Really? I'll just stay at work for dinner then. <laughs> Beef is actually really hard to cut through right now. Kinda worried about using it in the soup. Canada just legalized marijuana? I don't know about that. I never heard anything. I don't think they're ready yet. That would be a miracle. Last I heard it was pushed back. good slow cooker meat yeah I mean we should be able to get it tender within an hour though I guess we'll see maybe I fudged up the call Eat his hard joke, it writes itself. Yep. Okay, timer. Why are you yelling at me like that? Oh, okay, this stuff is looking crazy. I think that's done. It looks weird though, right? Let's cool it off. It didn't completely cover the tart, which I totally thought it would, but I am okay with that what it looks like guys what kind of restaurant do I work at like Mexican or Italian neither it's like contemporary food no really set cuisine just cook with really good local, locally sourced vegetables, meats, everything like that. Fish, for sure. And the menu changes almost daily, I would say. So we're just using whatever's fresh and what we have on hand. Oh, I know Vune. I knew some people were gonna think that. That was the first thing that I thought of when I first saw this dish too. It's like, there's gotta be rabbit in it. But there's not. I actually think I'm gonna start to brown this meat in a pot. this one while we continue to cook. How is that light? Not bad. Not too bad. So let's go like medium high heat to start. Got a little bit more to cut up, but I think we're almost there.
like beet foam over a vinegar granita with dollops of sphere fied albacore essence no no not that contemporary rare bit equals medium seared rabbit steaks yeah have I ever killed a rabbit? No, I have not. Your, your wife would just kill you. How dare you serve that? You thought you had a rabbit as a pet, but a week later you killed it and ate it. <laughs> I have actually heard that quite often. Dante, how are you, man? Your dad brought it home and you had to skin it. Well, at least he taught you something. You wouldn't eat rabbit for about a decade because you used to have one for a pet. See, that makes sense, Polish. Makes total sense. See, that's the best way to hunt the rabbits if if they're overpopulated. That is fair. Okay. I'm going to say that's enough beef for us today. <laughs> Probably more than enough. I'm just going to put some vegetable oil into the cast iron pan. Start to cook this beef. Just need enough to cover it, the bottom. The meat will release some fat as well as it cooks. Okay, that is hot, hot. So I'm not gonna put the bacon in yet. I think I'll saute the bacon with the leeks and the carrots. We don't want to overcrowd our pan too much either, so I'll probably do it in two batches. Yeah, mom's cooking rabbit for Sunday dinner. See you there. I don't know if this will all fit into the soup pot. I don't know where the other one is. It got packed up when the kitchen was torn down. It's wabbit season. Waskily wabbit. Can you post the news article link? Sure. It best be legit. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so now we're straining our broth. All this makes you wonder how back then they had to hunt for their food and now we just go to the store at McDonald's. I know, it's sad. It really is sad. There is no, like there actually is no real struggle in first world countries anymore. It's almost too easy and that's why everyone's fat. Yeah, sometimes you really gotta hunt for those golden arches. Is this legit, BBC News? Cannabis Act passed its final hurdle on Tuesday in a 52 to 29 vote in the Senate. Bill controls and regulates how the drug can be grown, distributed, and sold. Canadians will be able to buy and consume the drug legally as early as this September. Okay, so nothing until September still, but the bill has been passed. Okay, that pot is going off. Let's get our camera down. See how our beef is not really searing in that pan? 
want it to brown up really nice. This broth looks heavenly. Hunter gatherers had more free time than early agri agrarians. A much more varied diet. It makes sense though. Gonna wipe that out. We don't want those pieces to burn on when we turn this back to high to sear off our veg and our bacon. No burnt zupas. Okay, let's check it. Nice color. Golden brown and delicious. Getting it steamy in here. Siri, where's the nearest McDonald's? So bad. Okay, turning this back on to medium high. This is where the bacon goes in. Get those bacon strips. Serious, where's the where's the nearest dispensary? It's okay guys, I know where they all are. At least in my area. We finish all this stuff in stream. I'm gonna be so impressed. I feel like I bit off too much. I wear pro kitchen shoes. It's true, Mike. How are you? They're just so comfy, and plus, they protect me. <laughs> Bacon grease and spirit shot. Okay, we need a wooden spoon. going the liquid should evaporate from the beef in the pan good old Berkies yes love them I'm just putting the beef in the colander over by the sink but I'm not gonna throw it out I'll probably use it for lunch or something this week. I'll pull all the meat off. We got a good couple of liters of stock or broth. Probably two. I will beat you. The wooden spoon, watch out. The bacon go for a good little bit. It should just start to brown up and then we'll add in the leeks and the carrots. I may get splinters that I can't take out. <laughs> Even with the best plating squeezers, it's true. No. Opterix, I have no idea what that sentence even means. So yes, I did go, hmm. Do I enjoy streaming? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I didn't think I'd love it this much. But hey, now we know. 
Okay, our Welsh rare bit. We should probably start to prep this. You don't like wooden cooking utensils? <laughs> Elvin. Feel and the noise. I love wooden spoons. It's like nails on a chalkboard. Crazy. Sammy gave me the idea to stream. I never even knew what Twitch was until I met Sam. I am not a very big video game person, but it's so cool. Let's just say bye to that. Processed lunch meats were nasty. You ate a lot of cold boiled beef sandwiches. <laughs> Was it at least not super dry? Okay, now we're getting some color on there. Only took almost 10 minutes. Scrape off some of the sugars that are caramelizing on the bottom from the bacon. Okay, ready? That's what's coming out. And I'll just put it into this pot. tight fit. In that pot with all of our ingredients. So much meat. Yeah, can you have too much? I don't think so. Okay, Welsh rare bit. So I got rye bread for that. Let's just cover that again. Nice rye bread. I passed it away into the freezer. I bought it on Sunday. 
we eat like kings every day. I mean, I try to. Now let's do some nice thick slices. It says two centimeter thick slices. I think I'm gonna go a little bit more than that. How's this stuff doing? Looking good. Have I got mustard powder? Honestly, I was just gonna use my homemade beer mustard instead. I don't typically like to use mustard powder, but if you insist, <laughs> I don't know, I'd have to go hunt for it. It's somewhere in Betty's kitchen stuff, which doesn't exist anymore. I have no idea where it is. Why does it have to be dry? Ah, oh, it'll get too runny. I'm not using too much mustard to begin with because Sammy hates the taste of mustard. Unless it's on meats that have been roasted. You also enjoy your cameras steamed? Yeah, it's getting nuts over there. Okay, so nice even slices like that. Two, four, six, seven. I think that's enough cheesy toast. Okay, I have a good salsa roja recipe. Two habaneros, two jalapenos, and about 20 serranos. I do. It should be posted in my Discord. And that's the recipe that I used at the taqueria. Or like very similar to it. You might have to scroll up a couple of weeks though. I made it when I made the tamales, if that helps you. Okay, so that pot is browned up enough. I'm gonna pour the broth in and the potatoes to get them cooking. And this stuff's just finishing up. Ready for that sizzle? So good. So good. Yeah, I did both a Verde and a Roja. He is German, yeah. I mean, yellow mustard ruined it for him. It would be truly unheard of. <laughs> you tend to put the Worcestershire sauce in with the mix along with the other liquids instead of on top. Okay. You know, I thought if having it on top, it would be kind of weird. Nice Opterix. Yeah, this looks so good, hey? Okay, so whisk egg yolks, creme fraiche, and mustard. Stir in the cheese and season with salt and pepper. So 100 grams of cheddar cheese grated. So he doesn't heat the cheese up at all before he grills it. Interesting. Just says grilled until melted and bubbling. All right. Oh, we definitely don't want to boil this either, guys. Low and slow for our meat. Otherwise, it's going to be tough. We don't want that. Carnage, thanks for the follow. What are you gonna make with the tomatillos, Elvin? You also heat the cheese up before you grill. I know, I feel like the bread would get like burnt on the edges. 
just what I'm thinking. I think we need the, just the one more slice there. It just looks weird. That's your method. I mean, let's try it. It has to work. I mean, it's a Jamie Oliver recipe. Pork chili verde immediately comes to mind. That sounds good. You toast one side of the bread first. Okay, let's get our broiler on then. We'll toast the one side, flip it over. That way it's still crunchy underneath and not soggy. Oh. My oven's like, what do you want? You never said okay. Like, look how much liquid is coming out of this beef. Insanity. Let us scrape off whatever delicious bits have cooked onto the bottom of this. Here's the red pepper jelly. It's a uh, pretty liquid. It was set a lot more earlier. Are Jamie Oliver recipes reliable? Yeah, they are. I find that they are. My, oh, I'm so OCD. I am totally OCD. Insane. I admit it, 100%. Yeah, I would always organize the fridge. First thing I did on my Monday working, organize the fridge so I know what the heck I'm dealing with. And after that, get to work. Let's do that much grated and maybe a piece for Kate because I like cheese. The jelly from yesterday, it didn't set up that good. I don't know. Might have to add more gelatin to it. He's a bit of a numpty. Love it, buff. Strain the water out of there. So many things happening at once. Ah. Can we even fit all of this potato? All I know is this is going to be a full, full pot. <laughs> There's still veg to put in. Is there gelatin in the fruit jelly? There is, Mike. I just, it called for pectin and I tried to use enough gelatin. I guess I did not use enough. So I'll probably just have to heat it back up, melt the gelatin back in. Probably like one or two more sheets. And we should be good. Okay, this stuff is getting there again. So I'm going to 
sizzle finely. Your perfect roast chicken, nice. Yeah, Jamie has a lot of good recipes and good books too. 20 minute cooks are good, yes. Thanks for the bits, Lemon. You're still here. If it makes me feel any better, you measure the space between your desks. Oh my God, that would totally be me. <laughs> You're not OCD by nature, but by training. I feel like that's where I'm at. But at the same time, I've always been like a very clean person, very clean and organized. So I was born with it, I'm not afraid. I mean, sometimes it makes life harder, but for the most part, it makes life pretty easy. You don't know what the soccer thing attaches. I think it just gives the emote for people to use. Yay for crumbly white cheddar from the UK. And I think that beef got to come out of that pan. Wait for it. Wait for the steam. That is Flavortown. Let's put that on the back burner to cool off. edge in the pot. Never had the imported cheddar. Does it taste very different? Um, I would say yes. Like it's typically aged for quite a while. So it has that like nice salty kind of aged crunch to it, which I love. Absolutely love with cheeses. <laughs> Okay, turn that back down now. There goes the camera. Okay, so let's broil our bread and then we can assemble this rare bit. Chronic, thank you for the biddies as well. Love it. The more mature the cheese, the better it is for rare bit. <laughs> View, what a host. This one, let's see how it was aged. I don't know if it says on the wrapper still or not. 
15 months. Well, it's not super old, but you can tell by the way it crumbles. That's the way the cheese crumbles. Liz, thanks guys. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so we still gotta mix a couple things. The creme fresh, the egg yolks, and the mustard. And yes, I do have creme fresh. Go easy twitch, what? Well, there's that, I guess. Welcome in everyone. <laughs> Deglaze with red wine. See, none of the recipes had wine, but I totally would have. Because then I could have cracked this one. Oh, buff. You should have told me, man. Welcome in, guys. Let's not burn our bread, though. Okay. Looking at our recipe. So, two egg yolks, 150 grams of creme fraiche. Yeah, I blame both of you. This is so cool. Hopefully everyone's day is awesome. I will catch up with all the new follows once we slow down just a bit. We're just cooking some din right now. Yeah, I do like the emotes. Feels so good, guys. Grabbing my handy dandy scale out since we are doing some measurements. You're from Italy, nice. Italian food, like pizza is my favorite thing to eat and my second favorite thing is pasta homemade. So welcome in guys. Much love from Canada. Okay, our bread is toasted. Let's just set that there for now. Now we need to flip it over because this is the side we're gonna cheese. But at least the underside is crunchy so it's not gonna be soggy. Sit back and let Kate take you to Flavor Town. Thanks, Thunder. I mean, I try to. I try to. You eat pasta and pizza every day and you love it. If I could, I would totally eat it every day. Okay, we're just putting the can down so you guys can watch what I'm doing. Pizza, pasta, prosciutto, and parm. Yeah, I'm set. So you need 150 grams of the creme fraiche. This is homemade. So, so easy. Two cups of heavy cream and three tablespoons of buttermilk. I don't even know if we'll have enough, to be honest. Oh yeah, should be perfect almost. 140, close enough. La Donna mangia la pasta. <laughs> okay, scale is not needed anymore. But seriously, thanks for the host. I hope your stream went well. Not sure what you stream, but it's always great getting new people in here. 
So right now I'm making Welsh food for one of my viewers. So he cheered me last week, a bunch of money. And the way that I do my streams is I like to take my top cheer and top donator and cook them food on stream. So they can see my variation of how I would cook it. And most of the time I've never made what they request. I've never made any of this stuff today. So this is new. But so far so good, I think. So this is our soup. It has beef, bacon, potatoes, leeks, and carrots so far. And we made a beef broth from scratch today. And we're just gonna put in some veg later on when it's closer to being done and that way it won't get soggy. So right now I'm making the Welsh rarebit, which the base is creme fraiche, egg yolks, and a little bit of mustard. And then we're going to mix it with the cheese. And then we're gonna broil it and pretty much it's just cheesy toast. Just really fancy version. The yolks look perfect. Yeah, they're duck egg yolks. They're super custardy and delicious. Even this though, like this looks pretty uh, runny buff. I don't know about this one. <laughs> but I'm sure once we mix the cheese in, it'll get a lot more thick. I'm famous, not quite, Steve. I don't think so, man. But I really do appreciate these hosts. One step closer to getting partners. Nice, Mavaluccio. I love that emote, the little chef emote. Buff, I think it's too runny. Like, how is this gonna work? You would drink it? No, you wouldn't. I don't know about this one. Yeah, we're putting it on the bread. I think I'm just gonna grate up the rest of the cheese into there. Try and save it. Add a teaspoon of flour, you can. It won't taste too floury. Buff, saving my life right now. Thanks, go easy. And we're like halfway to partner. We're getting there. I'm like five months in. Booper, thanks for the hundred biddies. Okay, that helped a bit. I feel a little bit better now. And then it says we still need to add salt and pepper to this, otherwise it might taste a little bit bland. We need to season our cheese mixture. So just a little bit of salt. We don't want to over salt it. Because the cheese is quite salty to begin with as well. I think it will definitely benefit from the pepper. You were grimacing. It mixed in well. Buff, have faith. Have faith, man. Got this. 
What's going on with the giveaway? Oh, yeah. I guess this is a perfect time, chronic. So for the month of June, I am sponsored by someone in Vancouver that makes these aprons by hand. And I just got these ones in at the end of May with my logo embroidered on it. And I also have an extra one to give away. So for anyone that has Twitch Prime or Amazon Prime, if you sub to this channel this month, you will be entered to win one of these aprons. And the value on these are close to $200. And they're really awesome to not only cook in, but a lot of people said they would probably garden in it, or you can use it for carpentry as well. They're very versatile and they feel like a suit of armor. They're awesome. So if that's something that interests you, by all means, use your Amazon Prime or Twitch Prime for a free sub and you just might win an apron. And then you get the onion too. Exactly, Lemon. Okay, let's bring our toasts back over. I am more than capable to do it. Yeah, if I can't make Welsh rarebit, there might be something wrong. Okay, so our bread is toasted on the one side. We flipped it over. Brew with cake. Yes, Annie. So you could use it to brew as well. Just add a little addition in there. So this is some homemade pepper jelly that I made yesterday. And this is Jamie Oliver's recipe for the Welsh rarebit. So this gets spread on first. I'm not gonna do too much. I'm gonna go easy on it. Just cause it is a little bit runny, but it'll give a nice kind of vinegary and sweet flavor to contrast all of the rich cheese. Chronic, you lost it all. As you are British, you add Tabasco sauce. I mean, I'm down with the spice, but let's keep it, let's keep it very traditional this time. And there might be some spice in this too because we put a hot chili in it. What's the spread again, Lemon? This is pepper jelly that we made yesterday on stream. Vegemite. I've never, I don't know if I've ever eaten that, to be honest. Gross. Not something that interests me. As you can see, Sammy is not into it. <laughs> Sammy's gonna opt out of the Vegemite. Every time. Okay, so now this actually has firmed up a bit. Buff, do you think I should wait to put it on until right before we broil though? Because I feel like it's just gonna gloop over the sides and make a mess. I think that's probably the best option here. Which means in the meantime, we can finish our pineapple tart. Put pate on it, I couldn't do it, man. You can freeze it. Okay, I'm gonna wait on this. Do a little switcheroo. And let's come over with this guy. Well, that's actually hard enough now, so it's kind of like a caramel. Now it's time to get out our pineapple. Spread that on. I don't know if anyone in here has had pineapple delight. Nope. But this is what this recipe is based off of. It's just a more fancy version. Pineapple delight. Typically it's made with like Cool Whip and stuff. 
but we're gonna keep it classy and make everything from scratch. Had to start food cooking. What are you making, Rook? Do the rare bit when you're ready to eat the call. Okay, sounds good, man. We will focus on this for now then. Look how good this looks. It's just like sticky and delicious. Mmm. It's so good, Sammy's gonna die. I don't think anybody in chat wants that. Yeah, no one wants this. No, be dying. Oh, yeah, don't die. So just spread that out over our crust. One nice layer. Still trying some new dirty rice recipes. Nice. Do you put liver in your dirty rice? Because that totally ruined it for me. <laughs> How good does this look? I'm just going to keep kind of smashing it down. And that way it shouldn't fall apart when we cut it and serve it. Shabam. And then next, our cream cheese whipped with whipping cream and vanilla, unsweetened, just because the pineapple and the crust is so sweet. offset spatula for this. Beer and beer batter? What buff? That sounds good. Is it a very sweet dessert like pecan pie sweet? No. At least not how I prepare it, Lemon. Which is why I kept the cream unsweetened, because yeah, it would be just way too sweet to even eat. Get this cream on and then I'm gonna catch up. I'm gonna do a follower catch up for you guys. We got to. You only use pork liver when making boudin, which I have never made yet. So Sato versus Zombie, Conte Dracula, Anto, and Marshmallow. Thanks for the follow, guys. Welcome in. View. Have a good one, man. Get those sleeps in. Later. So now we just want to spread this out to the edges, and then we'll make it look real pretty. Do some like swirls or something. But dang, this looks good. So nice and smooth. You could have also piped this on if you wanted. I knew I wouldn't have too much time to do that today. So we're just gonna spread it on instead. Make it taste good, make it look good. Don't serve it if it's not, if it's not served. 
Yeah, don't serve food if you won't give it to your family or your mom, let's say. Guys, how good does this look though? Cooking for my mom, thanks for the follow. It's smoother than the lawn. Is this a popular dessert in Canada? <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Okay, so now for the design, I think we'll just do, I don't know how it's gonna work to be honest. Let's do something like that. Let's keep it simple. Because now we're still gonna top this. So I don't know if you guys have ever had coconut bacon. So, so simple to make though. So shredded coconut, which is toasted. And then I used a smoke powder, but you guys could use liquid smoke, put it on the coconut and toss it around and then toast it. And then add a little bit of salt and sugar. And that's how I have made coconut bacon. And it tastes very, very close to actual pork bacon. Like just a hint of smoke and it's salty and sweet. And I think that's gonna go really, really good with this tart. Bark dog with the raid. Welcome in guys. And plus I've been wanting to use this up. And pineapple and coconut is such a good combo. Hey apes man, how are you? Bark dog, how is the stream? Now we're just going to put that over the top. You can use as much or as little as you want. It was awesome. Were you cooking today? And if so, what did you make? Made a bomb steak chimichurri sandwich. Oh, nice. Chimichurri, so good with steak. And pork, actually anything, really any meat or vegetable. Nice, man. Okay, that is it. That is our pineapple tart. So I see our soup is simmering again, which is making me happy. I'm still a little worried about the beef being underdone. It wasn't bomb, it was perfect. Maybe. We'll see. I cut it up pretty small. Did you taste? There's some in that piece. Get there. We'll be okay. We might just end the stream a little bit early. Looks great. Elvin, it's time to go home. Okay, this is a heavy tray. So now, I think we should cut into this, hey? Get the reveal. We got our pie server. Thanks for the bits, man. Thanks, Lemon. It does look good, hey? All right, Alvin. Thank you so much, man. Okay, you have to see the reveal. Okay, I'll cut it up quick then. <laughs> this is a big tart as well, guys. Like, it should serve way more than eight people. Oh, look at this goodness. Lick the cream around the edges, yes. We'll do a piece like that. We'll keep it reasonable. Trying not to get diabetes. <laughs> The struggle though. Mm. 
grab it a little plate. And actually, this is going to be a little bit difficult. <laughs> I forgot that the edge comes off. So I'm just gonna lift it like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those layers though. It looks super good. Looking so fancy. Should serve you eight times. Yeah. Sounds about right. You need a tart pan. Okay, I'm going in. Sammy, you want a little piece? I don't think you're allowed to say no. This is like one of my favorite desserts as a kid. <laughs> Is it too sweet? No. This is my ouchie. Oh. You have like a little bruise above your eyebrow. You got smashed. Bye, Elvin. It is so good. I will try to do this recipe for you guys on Discord. Because I kind of obviously did not follow the one for the 13 by 9 pan. It is so good. So the crust, yes, is sweet. The pineapple is pretty sweet, but it is like very, very concentrated pineapple flavor. The topping is unsweetened. The coconut's not super sweet, and it gets that like nice smoky, crunchy flavor, which I think is perfect. You're gonna spoil my appetite, nope. Yeah, that was close. Like, imagine getting a bungee cord in the eye. Yeah, right Terrifying. After your, right after you get laser eye surgery. <laughs> lemon, I think you would like this. It would probably be good with lemon. Like, lemon curd, too. At least I think so. You can do some variations. Banana would probably be good. Okay, we are putting this over here. Dunzos. And now all we have left to do is put the veg into the soup. You've wanted to try making chess pie, but it seems so sweet. Yeah, I've never made chess pie either. He almost became a pirate. That would have been so bad. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick bathroom break and then we'll finish off the soup. Do a little tasty taste and send the kids off to somebody else. You guys know the deal. everyone doing? Okay, let's go in the bathroom. You love dance? Maybe we'll love? Get down tonight.
What is cheese pie? Oh, Chess. <laughs> Rook. Give us the cheese. No, it's true, Sammy. You can't. Tries to steal the dessert, but realizes the kitchen is shut down upstairs. Hilarious. Chess pie is a sweet custardy, thick sweet pie made with cornmeal and sugar. Super sweet. Okay, well, we didn't get to pickling today. Just saying, guys. <laughs> Did not get there. Let me try a piece of beef, see where we're at. Potatoes should pretty much be cooked. And the other veg that's going in here, if we can fit it, should only take around 10, five to 10 minutes to heat up. Just needs a kiss of heat. Just go back to CDF, not CT dessert. <laughs> it's getting there. Probably like 10 to 20 minutes more, and then it's gonna be tender. Hey, sounds good, lemon. Sounds a good. Uh. I will see you on Thursday. I'm not going to be on stream tomorrow. So hope that everything is well. Night nights. Uh, I really don't think we're going to fit this bowl of veg in. But I will attempt to right now. Thanks for everything, Lemon. I should be okay. Oh, yeah. I'll be all right. Fill the pot up. Fill it. Terrifying. Try and mix this in. Mushrooms, zucchini, and peas is my addition to the soup. And we still have to add salt and pepper to this soup as well. I think we can add this a little bit. You're about to go, Rook. No problem, man. Chronic. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for all the biddies. All of the soccer balls. It's bringing me back. Okay, so this is insanity. What are we gonna do with the rest of this? Sack, thank you as well. I am just going into Discord because I don't want to ask Buff. Arlen. Arlen underscore is your bro. That's the blacksmith. I think we're going to raid him after this. Sack, 
back. I've been good. How are you? Yeah, blacksmith raid. It's going to be super cool. Thank you. Thank you. Frick, yeah. Is he still on buff? Cool, he is. Okay, totally going to. We're gonna do it. Busy getting ready to move. Nice, moving up in the world. Congrats, Sap. Hope everything goes well. There's typically some stuff that goes wrong, but just take your strides. eat a couple pieces of cheesy toast hopefully he can show your knife that would be so cool i would love that you hate moving it's the worst some people like moving and others just start like want nothing to do with it bye chronic and bye rook have a good one, man. Take care of yourself. You thought about paying someone to pat, but then you checked out the prices. Yeah. Time over money. Time won that time. Thanks, Rook. I mean, I think it's going to be a great cook. I feel like all of this is going to work out. I just need to wait a couple more minutes for the beef. But the cheesy toast will probably broil for a couple minutes as well. So what I'm going to do... Get out the bowl. To plate. Is it weird if I plate this in a waffle? No. Okay. Buff, I'm gonna plate it in this. I think that would be a really nice color contrast. Most of the stuff you have, you don't need. That too. Like purging before moving, really good feeling too. Really, really good. <laughs> Your stove timer is actually going off this time. So then I'll put it on the plate like this. And then just put the cheesy toast in front. The Welsh rare bit. I think that would look really, really good together. That was the plan in my head. Grabbing some more aguas. And I think we are going to start to season the soup. Shouldn't take us too, too long. Start with some cracked black pepper. There's a lot of soup here, so you will need quite a bit of seasoning. But 
we'll start small and work our way up. So once you add the salt, it's very, very difficult to take it out. Hello. How's the food? Almost ready. Give this a tasty taste. I didn't realize how bad that light is reflecting, guys. You should have told me earlier. I'm sorry. That was really, really good. Just taste one more time. I like the little hint of bacon. Like, not overpowering, but you definitely know it's there. Need just a touch more of salt like that and I think we are perfect Perfectly salted. You get all of the flavors. Okay, let's turn our broiler back on. It's time to make some rare bit. Shouldn't take too long to heat up either. Try and keep it spread out like this. That way it can evenly toast. Oh yeah, this is set up quite nice. I'm not overly concerned anymore. Buff. Does that look like enough? Almost looks like the chunkiest hollandaise ever. This is what it's reminding me of. A really, really bad scrambled egg hollandaise. <laughs> or the base for carbonara. If you sub the cheddar for parm. Egg yolks and cheese. So good. There doesn't need to be loads, he says, but there's so much of this cheese sauce. So I just don't want it to like run too much over the sides. Buff says I'm good, then I'm good. I actually think we had just enough. See, it's a good thing I did slice off that extra piece of bread. It wasn't just my OCD. Boom, that's it. It's so gooey. Like, holy. 
Is everyone alive still? You like to add five spice or cinnamon? That would be good. How does that taste with the cheese though? That kind of freaks me out, I think. Cinnamon and cheese. She's hot. We're going in, guys. We're almost there. Woohoo! I think this might be better off. I think so. is over. And now it's time for me to be a little kid and watch the cheese melt. Oh, it's already going over the sides. Washing this pan, not looking forward to it. <laughs> So we want to toast this or broil it until the cheese starts to bubble, obviously, and just gets a little bit browned. Oh, you know what we didn't put in, Buff? The Worcestershire. So I guess we'll just have to garnish with a couple drops. That's a must. The Worcestershire sauce. I think that will, will make it really nice. We got the best brand. Is there any other brand than this though? I've never seen it. Pre-melting the cheese helps with overflow. I will have to try that next time then. I feel like we're gonna have another Welsh rare bit at some point. So we'll try it your way next time. There's loads of different kinds. This is all we get here. Lee and Perrin's. Oh, it's browning up. I think I might do a little rotation on this tray. So the back stuff is browning faster. It actually looks really, really good. So close. Oxford sauce? What's that? And I just turned our soup off as well. There's only one in there that is taking its sweet time to toast up. And I think we are there. Oh yeah, look at that guys. Y'all ready for this? I'm not, I don't think I am. How good does this look though? I think I killed it on this one. It didn't run over too much, actually. So what it says now on Jamie's recipe is he said crisscross this part if you can. And then that's where you put the Worcestershire. I don't want to break the crust too much, though. Thanks, Buff. And that way the Worcestershire will stay on. And I would say definitely wait a couple minutes before biting into this. 
Otherwise, I feel like your mouth will burn instantly. Molten cheese goodness. <laughs> Looks too good. Thanks, Steve. You linked the Oxford sauce? Okay, it sounds good. I will have to check it out. What is Acheron? This is called Welsh Rarebit, which is cheesy toast. Hi. Very fancy version of a Welsh cheese toast. Inject the sauce. Thanks for the follow. We're just going to put a squirt of this. Like that. Mm. See, now it smells right. I'm just gonna take those away. Actually, I'll just put them over here. And we'll do our soup plate up. It's going over to the stove, guys. Guys, how do you plate a soup, though? There is only one way. It was a trick question. I don't know if we got any mushrooms in there. So that's my call. Call. The toast looks so crunchy. Yeah, they look so good. And I'm just going to garnish with some freshly chopped parsley, freshen it up a bit. Buff, I hope you approve. And before I dig in, I need to take a photo or two. It looks good. Thanks, Buff. Take a picture of the cheesy toast. Do I stream every day? No, I am doing Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. From 2.30 p.m. PST. Steve, you love salad. Take a bite of the cheesy toast. I will. I will. I'll do this little guy. Cheers, guys. Like, look at that. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. The red pepper spread on there is so good. Just gives that little bit of sweetness and tang. You don't really notice the egg yolks or even the creme fraiche or the Worcestershire. Just tastes like cheese toast, which is awesome. Now into the soup. Holy moly macaroni. Yes, a Karen. So now just getting a little piece of beef, potato, some of the veg. Let's give this a taste. You wouldn't put the egg or creme fraiche in. At least we know it works. Mm-hmm. That's a good soup. The beef is a little bit chewy still. That's my own fault. But the flavor is so, so good. Like I said earlier, that little hint of bacon really brings the rest of the dish together, especially with the mushrooms and the zucchini in there too. You don't really notice the leeks too much, but 
I think that's supposed to be how it is. Thanks, Steve. I'm glad I made your day. Okay, Welsh food. We did it. Thanks for all the pointers, Buff. We're going to go raid your friend now, the blacksmith. Maybe he'll show us your knife. That is so, so cool. So thanks, guys, for all the new follows today, all the biddies. We had a pretty crazy host there as well. It was a fun stream. Learned some new stuff. Never cooked this food before, so hopefully you guys learned some stuff too. And Pineapple Delight is where it's at. Now you know. Bye, guys. I will see you on Thursday. Remember, there's no stream tomorrow. Where is my mouse?